Okay, I have to make a treat for my kids because they're gonna do something horrible for me tonight, which is go outside after it's gotten dark and help me to round up a bunch of our loose chickens. We just finished the new chicken coop. I mean, it needs its finishing touches for sure, but it's enough to keep them contained. So I'm gonna enlist the help of my kids to go and help me catch all the loose chickens that have just been having a grand old time around the farm over the summer. So they've been begging me to make them some homemade marshmallows. It's kind of rainy and dark out, so I thought it'd be the perfect thing to surprise them with. Before we treat ourselves to some homemade marshmallows in the kitchen today, I would like to thank Babel Live for sponsoring today's video. I have been trying to practice my Italian every day with Babel, and I am making progress. Babel Live makes it even better. This is really an incredible resource for those of you who are wanting to learn and practice speaking a new language. So we all know how much we love Babbel and using the app and using native speakers to learn. Well, Babbel Live takes that to the next level because what it does is it puts you in small classrooms with other students who are wanting to learn that language as well. So you get into this small group setting with no more than six students and then a certified teacher helps you to practice your language and to learn really what becomes an important part of learning a language, which is the cultural context of what you're learning. So a huge reason why I want to learn Italian is because I have a trip planned that sort of keeps getting pushed back and pushed back, but I will be going. This is gonna be a photography and a food-based trip. So I really need to build up my vocabulary and my grammar and my cultural context around these topics. Babbel Live explores all different kinds of topics and all different kinds of languages depending on which one you're learning. This gives us an amazing opportunity to learn to speak with native speakers that will help us to understand how to use this language when we're there using it. The other great thing about Babbel Live is that you're no longer bound to learn a language that others speak around you. Babbel Live is a way for me to connect on my schedule with other people who are wanting to learn the same. Right now, you can get a limited offer of up to 65% off of your Babbel Live subscription by clicking on my link in the description. If you've been wanting to add a new element to learning that language and taking it to the next level, be sure you check out Babbel Live by clicking the link below. Prepariamo il dolce. So this is a beef gelatin. You typically get this in bulk from Azer. Always keep it on hand for such occasions. And then I've got a half of a cup of warm water here. I'm gonna just hydrate my gelatin. It's just gonna hang out there for a couple of minutes while we turn our attention to the naturally sweetened part of this homemade marshmallow. So we're gonna get some more water. We're gonna sweeten these marshmallows with some honey that we harvested from our beehives just this past weekend. It is a sticky job. In fact, my shoes are still sticking onto the floor, even though I've mopped it a few times but I have a bunch of honey on hand. So that's how we're gonna sweeten these marshmallows. If you've never made homemade marshmallows, they're actually really simple. You can also use maple syrup if you'd like to naturally sweeten yours that way. I'm gonna go for another half cup of water here. And then here is our beautiful honey. Look at this. It's kind of amazing. I think of honey like a wine when you get used to the way that yours tastes from the flowers that you have on your property or the orchards that are around you, really starts to take on a distinct flavor. So here we go. One cup. Now, my candy thermometer has been broken for quite a few years. So when I make something like I'm gonna make here, which is sort of getting this honey really sticky, which is gonna help hold our marshmallows together, I'm gonna to kind of do it by eye, and actually, I'll do it a little bit by time as well. So I'm gonna get my timer going for 15 minutes, which will be plenty of time to pour a glass of wine, clean up the kitchen a little bit for supper, and of course, butter my pan, because once these marshmallows are done, we're gonna to need to pour them into something. So this is just a standard eight by eight cake pan that I have on hand. And I've got a little piece of parchment paper here. 
It doesn't need to be perfect, just something I can kind of place on the bottom, which will help them from sticking so terribly. And then a generous amount of butter. And we're gonna grease this pan. I know homemade marshmallows might seem a little fussy or, you know, maybe just not worth the effort, but I promise you that they are. There really is something very rustic and very special and very comforting about them. I usually, you know, make them maybe six or seven times a year, which is plenty. They're very sweet. They are definitely a treat. Okay, I'm gonna set this aside, clean up my area a little bit, and then come back to my honey and water when it's at the soft ball stage, which if you have a candy thermometer, it'll have a little marking on there. For me, I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it and give it about 15 or 20 minutes. All right, it's smelling very good in here. I've made a little bit more headway on the actual food we're gonna be eating for dinner, which is twice baked potatoes, by the way. I can't just send them out with empty stomachs full of marshmallows to go get all the chickens. So I've got my powdered sugar ready. That's gonna, of course, give us that white, pillowy, marshmallow sweet element. And I have my honey mixture here. So the honey mixture is at the perfect softball stage here. So now I'm gonna slowly drizzle my honey mixture into my gelatin that has been hydrating here this whole time. I'm gonna go nice and slowly, really get that gelatin to melt evenly because you do not want chunks of gelatin in your marshmallows. Now, if you have any major chunks of gelatin sticking to the side, just take a second, scoosh it in. It's gonna be hot, so be careful. This is not the stage I usually let the kids help with. They can add the powdered sugar, but not this part. It's just too hot. Give this some time to really combine well. Again, we really don't want any of those pieces of gelatin to stay intact. It needs to melt with the honey. I wish I had a vanilla bean, but I do not. So I'm gonna add just a few drops of vanilla extract. All right, now we're gonna add our powdered sugar. One cup at a time. If I add the powdered sugar right now, it'll go and it'll explode. I'm gonna turn it down. Hello. Add in my powdered sugar until it sort of combines, and then we'll crank it up again to combine it well. left to do now. Look at this. <laughs> Juju wants to lick it. Not yet. Oh, it's just thick and white and meringue and <laughs> so sweet. You can see why these are most definitely a treat. But at least you know when you make them at home, they are not full of all the junk. Okay. Scrape them into your prepared pan here. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? For a little measure of added protection, I'm gonna add in some powdered sugar here. And what this is gonna do is stick to the, is stick to the marshmallows instead of the marshmallow sort of sticking to the pan. Oh. One thing you need to know about homemade marshmallows is that they are very sticky. Because they have the honey in them, because they're homemade, they're gonna have just a slightly different texture than your standard marshmallow. So just embrace it. It'll just be a little, a little bit gooier. 
It also makes them that much more delicious in a cup of hot chocolate. You can see now why we took the time to make that beautiful kind of honey taffy, really. It gets them so nice and sticky. You could easily double this batch of marshmallows because they do store. You just kind of have to um, toss them in some powdered sugar to keep them from sticking together. Not yet, Juju. Okay. It's probably about as clean as I am going to get this sticky marshmallow. Oh my gosh, it's just so fabulous though. Look at it. Anticipation from the waiting crowd. Juju, you know what you have to do for these marshmallows. You gotta help me catch some chickens. <laughs> All right, now we're just gonna tilt it ever so slightly. Okay, now let it sit. Is it good? All right, now in an ideal world, these would sit out for actually a couple of days, which will help them to dry out and to set. I doubt I'll be able to hold my kids off for that long. So what I'm gonna do instead is just dust the top with powdered sugar, set them aside. I need to finish supper. We do have a lot of chickens to catch. So when we come back inside, we'll cut into these and see how they turned out.